What's going on guys, Bob Ack Owen here, coming at you with a hockey hip mobility routine. This is the complete routine that is gonna get you warmed up and ready to go on the ice. But before we do that, if you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon, so you can get notified for the next time I post something. I'm coming at you guys with hockey mobility routines, activations, little workouts that you guys can do during the season, and following that up, we are slowly but progressively going to get that off-season routine that you guys are gonna be able to sign up for. It's gonna be all linked at some point down below, probably by the summertime. But until then, get your full mower, your lacrosse ball, baseball is fine too, and a bench or a chair. That's all you're gonna need for today. Let's get this thing going. All right, so to keep things nice and simple, we are going to do 30 second bouts of every single stretch and every single hole and every single exercise. So it keeps it nice and simple. So pay attention to the timer up above. We are gonna kick things off with a foam roll. So grab your foam roller and we are gonna get started. So we're gonna start by just foam rolling the quad here. So we're gonna roll for 30 seconds here. Now, you're probably wondering why am I foam rolling my quad? This has nothing to do with mobility. Uh, it's not a stretch. It's actually soft tissue. It can be in a completely different, uh, I guess, area of warm up itself. But the reason I'm throwing this into the mobility section is actually very beneficial for hockey players. It's super important for you to do this specific one. And here's why. We're going to switch sides. The reason you want to do a quad formal and then you wanna do a nice hip flexor uh, release and stretch is simply because if you don't, if you do that, you're actually gonna be taking advantage of something called reciprocal inhibition, where I'm gonna release uh, and activate, I'm gonna release the, the kind of affected muscle group, which is basically the quad and hip flexor. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate the opposing muscle group, which is the hamstring, the glutes. All right, we're good here. Let's put the roller to the side. And then we're going to grab lacrosse ball, baseball. Tennis balls don't really work, golf balls are way too small, but a lacrosse ball is great, awesome. This is one of, the, one of my favorite tools to use for soft tissue. So from here, we're gonna place it on the ground. We're gonna place it right up inside of that bone from the hip bone. You're just gonna go in and you're gonna drop your weight on it. Um, you might notice some soreness, it's totally normal. Uh, you wanna go just on the inside of the bone and we're just going up and down, maybe about two to three inches, that's it. Again, going for 30 seconds here. So again, you're going to activate the, the glutes and the hamstrings. That's gonna allow the hip flexor to release. So we're actually using a natural occurring process in the body to work backwards and kind of release the hip. Now for a hockey player, the hip is actually one of the most like troublesome areas. So a lot of players complain about that and a lot of players are always trying to look for some kind of relief in the hip flexor joint, and a hip flexor area in the hips. So this is a great way to really get a lot of that anterior. So basically everything at the front, the front of your hip kind of gets some release out of it. It's a trick I used to use while well, switching sides here. Take the ball, place it on the other side and right back into it. So this is a trick I used to use with uh, a lot of players who are kind of chronically struggling with it. You release the hip, you activate the glutes, the hamstrings, and then you go right into a stretch. And honestly, it was working wonders. Now it does. Uh, allow us to kind of get into a couple of different things, you know, core activation and other things like that. Uh, active range of motion, which is exposed in the front of the hip. But these are all really good things that are going to kind of set you up for your practice, set you up for a game as well. So once we've done that, taking the ball, tossing it to the side. I'm afraid of tossing this. I feel like it's gonna come back into view. It did. Awesome. Well, I guess it's staying in my pocket. Um, we're gonna go right into a hip bridge. So on your back, it's really important for this one to activate your core. So if you activate the core, you're gonna get a nice locked position of the pelvis, and we're gonna go up here for 30 seconds. We're just gonna go up and down, hold it for a brief second at the top and come back down. So you wanna activate the core, push through your entire foot into the ground to get the glute, get the hamstring, the fire. We're going for only 30 seconds of that. Now, if you find this one too easy, you're not really feeling anything in the glute and the hamstring, it doesn't have to be intense, but if you're not finding anything at all, right above here, I'm gonna post a progressed version of this uh, for you to do. And now we're going to switch, and we're gonna go right up into a hip flexor stretch. So grab a chair, grab a bench, doesn't matter what you're doing. You can put your leg up on your couch if you're at home trying to do this one. You're putting your leg up, 
And we're going to just hold this position. I'm just gonna double this up. We're gonna hold this position for again, 30 seconds here. So you're trying to reach, keep the core contracted, hold that stretch the entire time. Again, great way to get all of that done. You're getting a quad stretch in here. Actually, I'm a little, there we go. Ooh, Ooh I've been sitting down a lot today. Um, this is a great way to open up the interior hip. It's super easy. Everything here should be very accessible to you. You can bring it with you to practice, keep it with you at home if you wanna do it at home before you go. Uh, I recommend this stretch, switching sides here. Get a big and shake it off between stretches. Drop them back in. This is something that I would really recommend, especially if you're going on like a long road trip. So if you're traveling to a game, if you're, game, if you're traveling for over an hour, and then you're not, so you're, let's say you play a game, you're traveling, you get to the hotel, or you get back home, what I would tell you to do is throw in this stretch, even just this little portion here. You don't have to do the whole mobility. Just that one there is gonna be monumental for you in terms of getting you ready, and getting you out of the kind of the tight, confined position that you were in when you were in your car, when you were on the plane, bus, whatever. Uh, on this one, we are moving on. So quad, hip flexors are done. Going back down on the mat here. This one here is very popular. This is called the 90-90. The reason it's called a 90-90 is you're gonna have a 90 degree angle on one knee, 90 degree angle at the other knee, and 90 degrees between both thighs, okay? So you set yourself up like that. The key thing here is that we're gonna, so I'm gonna show you the start, and then I'm gonna show you the transition. So start here is, we're doing 30 seconds of this. You're gonna lean in, getting a one, two second stretch, and then here, feet on the ground, rotating to the opposite side here, and stretching and then coming back. Notice that my hands are in the air, so I'm not keeping my hands on the ground as I'm stretching. I'm rotating, hands up in the air. And then we're going back to the other side. There are so many progressions to just this one exercise, but I like to just keep it nice and simple and get a couple per side here, okay? And one more from good measure. I know we're probably over a time limit here. We're gonna get another more. One more in, okay. Once we're done that, Next exercise we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing an ankle knee drive. Before we go into the next one, I'll do an ankle knee drive because the next one's gonna incorporate some feet and I'll show you what we're doing. Ankle knee drive here is very simple. You're gonna start in a lunge position, similar to what we were doing with the hip flexor stretch, but all you're doing is focusing all of your attention on that ankle. So you're here, you're imagining there's a straight wall in front of you and you're just trying to push through the wall, get some stretching in the calf. So as a skater, the calf is really an area of huge importance. The reason it's an important area in the calf and the ankle joint is because a lot of what you're doing in your boot is kind of confined and restricted. The boot's super solid and you need to be able to kind of give a little bit of fluidity and push off as you're kind of flowing through that stride. The other thing you're gonna need is as you're on one leg and you're striding, you're loading that leg and switch legs here. You wanna make sure that when you're doing it, you're getting down into that nice stride position your ability to be efficient at the ankle and bend at the ankle is really monumental for you in terms of your ability to get into the correct posture and the correct position to be able to really take that stride and press out. When I work with skating coaches, this is one of the areas that's usually, usually a big concern of theirs is to always make sure that their players have enough mobility at the ankle. If you feel like you're stuck here at the ankle, just try working through it. Try to find that posture where you can keep your foot flat on the ground and still drive through, okay? Don't avoid it. This is a big one. You're gonna wanna work on it. Next one we're gonna do is a frog stretch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our feet out to the side. From here, we're gonna sit down into it and then we're gonna come out of it and we're gonna open up and then open up. Okay, we're going for 30 seconds. Here we go. Drop down. Open up, open up. Now internal rotation, which is what we're working on. We're working on actively cranking and going into internal rotation. It's super important as a hockey player because what you're going to be doing when you get that, oh, forgot this side. As a hockey player, you wanna be able to press, have that internal rotation to be able to sit down into that posture, okay? If you don't have that and if you lose it, you're always gonna struggle with that ability to sit low into your stride. 
and your groin is usually always gonna be really tight, especially when you skate, play, come off the ice, sit on a bus, sit in a car for 30 minutes, an hour, sometimes six hours. So you wanna make sure that the entire capsule is really worked through. Next one we're gonna do is a sprinter stretch. So sprinter stretch is super, super easy, super convenient. Gets the hamstrings to release. What we're doing here is get into a sprinter, sprinter stride here. So basically you're about to start sprinting and all we're doing is lifting the back leg up and just rocking forward. We're holding it for a couple of seconds, we're coming back down. So we're going through 30 seconds of this. As you're pressing, rock back, hold it. Try to actively fire the quad to give you that, if this fires, this is gonna relax, right? Reciprocal inhibition. We're trying to get that hamstring to release now and getting some movement out of it. So you might be wondering, well, if we just activated our hamstring and our glute, why are we releasing it now instead of releasing it earlier? Honestly, it doesn't matter. But the reason I want this stretch out last is I like to start on the ground, work my way up to standing with my stretches, right? So from here, stretching through. I wonder if the mic just picked up my knee. My knee just like crunched like crazy. I wonder if that's my meniscus. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if I caught a few knee injuries that never really turned into me getting an MRI per se, but that was loud. If I collapse randomly, it's because my meniscus just got cut. All right, last one here. And we're good. I probably went over a bit. That's okay. All right, nice and easy hip mobility. It's basically gonna come up and take care of everything you're gonna need as a hockey player to get yourself ready, warm up the hips. This is a common area of problem for a lot of my players. I highly recommend getting on this program as long as you can. Uh, and as frequently as you can, the more you do it, the better off you're gonna be. Now, if you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If you like this clip, post a little comment down below. Let me know that you wanna see more of these clips, especially about hockey. Uh, it is my specialty, it's what I work with the most. The players, the athletes I work with the most, we are gonna be putting in a lot of like little clips, follow along clips, especially during the summer, especially during the off season, so you guys can see what I'm up to with a lot of my athletes. Got a lot of stuff coming, super excited about that. And until that next time, guys, See you later.